This is a step-by-step -step process of how I would take horizontal video that was not designed to be vertical, but converting it to vertical. So that's stuff for like social media, um, Instagram, TikTok, things like that. All right, so this is a video I shot for my brother for his company, and he just wanted it to be, you know, regular uh, horizontal video, but, and that was all he wanted. But let's say he came to me and said, hey, I like the video, but I want to be able to have it vertical for social media. This is how I would go about doing that. Basically, I would just save a new project to make a copy. I would just say save project as, and then it says copy right now. Let's just say I did, uh, nine by 16 for a vertical. Now you see at the top here that the title is different. So you now, so you know that you're now in a, in a new project. So any changes you make here is not gonna mess up the other one because you had a new one. And if you click on the home, the project manager button, you see you have this new one here. So you're good to go there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is go to my settings wheel here at the bottom right. And I'm gonna go to use vertical resolution. So this is super easy because all I got to do is check it and it's going to automatically make the conversion for you. You don't have to do the math or, you know, swap things out, which is good because it can be different. If it's 4K, it's not going to be 1920 by 1080. It's going to be something different. So you'd have to go in and, you know, make those adjustments yourself. This is makes it quick and easy, swaps it. So that way your horizontal becomes your vertical, vertical, horizontal, all that good stuff. Hit save. And now here we go. We now have our nice nine by 16 vertical video for Instagram and TikTok and all of that. But as you see, things get all messed up and <laughs> changed around. The one thing about the uh, Vinci Resolve's uh, graphics are that they're built for vertical video. So you'll notice that things look kind of messed up. So, uh, you know, you can go in and make adjustments. We're, we're, we're gonna just turn that off for now. Now what you need to do is kind of go through and make the adjustments to all your clips. This is the free version and I'm gonna show you how to do it because I know not everyone has the paid version. So I'm gonna show you how to do it manually. But if you have the, the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, there is a way to, um, there is a way that you can make the program do it itself. But we're just gonna do it right here on the edit page for free. And honestly, it's not that difficult in my opinion. All I'm doing is basically going over to my inspector panel on the right after I clicked on the video and I'm making the adjustments myself. So let me go back so you can see. I want to make sure I'm not leaving things unexplained. You click on the clip you want to change, go over to your inspector window over here, and I'm just going to grab the position, the X position, and slide it over. And now he's centered up in the middle. And you could make adjustments either way, or if you wanted to punch in more, you could do that as well. We don't need to do that though. Now you want to just go through and make sure everything is good. So kind of play it through and I had to kind of decide what the main thing was in the situation. So I was showing the bag again. I didn't shoot this vertically. So is that going to be perfect or ideal? So we're going to have to kind of play with this a little bit, but this is like, you know, real world situations. You don't always have the perfect scenario because especially if it wasn't like made for that, so you gotta just play with it and mess around. So I think really what, what I'm gonna do instead of trying to zoom in is I'm just gonna shift the exposition over. Uh, and, uh, and the thing with social media is you're probably, he, he would probably tag vet, uh, Vito here anyway. So I'm not gonna be too concerned about seeing the logo perfectly in it because I want to be able to see the bag. Guess what the main thing he's talking about is the bag. So I wanna make sure it gets in there. Okay, so. I did like a little punch in thing here and it worked for horizontal. It could work for this, but I'm going to actually, I might, I might, I might use it, but we'll see. We'll see. Let me just slide it up real quick. Let me see what this does. I think I punched in just to have the variation there. I don't really remember why I did it exactly, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, and then what we can do is go over to, to this one now and look at what we got. It's not a lot of wiggle room we can do here and we don't, we can't really do that. So I probably would just do something like that. Top of the frame, yeah. Let's go back, slide it over a little bit. So let's see what that looks like. Let me mute these. 
going through there. Oh, okay. Was it because I was jerking around a little bit there? All right. So let's see. Let's let let's go back to what I to what I had before. Let's shift this down. Let's see. So we'll, we will keep what I did and we'll just adjust it. I don't think that's bad. So let's see what that looks like now. Veto bag. You start to see the bag. Yeah, it just feels weird because you, you're really not seeing the bag. So I almost think that I should just start with this one and just get rid of this. So let's see. Let's see what that does. Oh, it, there's a jerk because I had a stabilization on it. So let's go back and restabilize the shot. I assume I did this on tripod, but I guess I just wanted it to be a little smoother. Yeah, I think I would probably do something like that for the horizontal video. Just to, because the other shot compositionally to me just doesn't really work well. So if, because, because if you go back to it, there's not really any point where we're seeing it. We we are seeing it at this point. I gotta go down so low, and then and then my camera was my move started jerking. So that's probably why I cut away from it because it wasn't a smooth pan down. I, I messed up the pan movement, but I wanted that that initial opening shot, if you would. So we're just gonna roll with this one. I think it's fine for the vertical, and I'm gonna go back and listen to what he's saying, make sure it lines up. And this is another variation. I don't know why I didn't put stabilization on that, but let's go ahead and hit perspective. Again, like, yeah, if you wanna, if you got, if you got a shot that's not um, perfectly stable, you would click on it and go over to, uh, to your inspector panel over here, scroll down to you see stabilization, and then you can choose a type. Uh, most times I use perspective, but you can play with them because you'll, you'll see different variations. Some. Different uh, stabilization modes work better than others. So definitely check that out. Um, test it on each clip you do because it's not always the same. All right. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Doesn't look too warbly, wobbly. All right. Now, this shot I punched in on. I think I just did it for stylistic choice, but it doesn't translate the same to me in vertical. So I'm going to just leave the shot. I'm not going to zoom in. I am going to center him up. I think I had him off centered compositionally to get that in there. But again, I think it looks kind of weird when you're trying to do that. I mean, it, it could work. It could work. But I'm going to do this just to more, more so get him somewhat in the center. Bring up my guide frames here. Get him somewhat centered in there. I was kind of more so trying to center his face, not so much his body perfectly. And then it cuts to that. And then I did another bag shot. So that's easy. I think that was a frame hold too. I don't think that was even, I think, yeah, I think I did a frame hold on that one. But so basically almost like a still image and I just added some motion to it just to, just so it wasn't static. All right, so I, yeah, there's not really much I can do about that. I guess I can take off the, uh, take out the dynamic zoom and let it sit but that's just the framing that it has so i might as well put that back on it's fine you see another bag i can't change the <laughs> the composition it is what it is see you can see it there fine and this is the down this is the downside to trying to sh uh turn horizontal content vertical it doesn't always work if you didn't uh consider horizontal i mean if you didn't if you weren't planning for a vertical uh, a vertical format while you were shooting in horizontal a lot of times you'll have this where uh, parts of the image are, are cut are cut off because you were framing it where the whole image would have been seen in a horizontal timeline but now when you're in vertical some of it's going to get cut off and that's just kind of the nature of it which again it's not a big deal like I said this wasn't supposed to be uh, shot vertically or used for vertical uh in a vertical distribution this is just me making it making something up for <laughs> for this video but sometimes that happens so it's a good real world uh scenario all right yeah so i think that i think that's pretty good i could probably find another part of this to use um let me bring it up in the 
Let me see another part of the frame. I could start here. That might be a little bit better if I started there. Could you see more of it for longer? Yeah, I think I'll start it there instead. So yeah, I'll just grab that and bring it down. Replace it with that. I just match frame. So if you hit F on your keyboard, it will pull up, um, basically pull up the original thing before you drop it into the timeline. And you can find another part, another part of the image if you want. Put that there. to match the vertical framing a little bit better. And he does his thing. And then, uh, yeah, we end it out. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to leave a like and also leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Until next time, peace.